On January 25, 1882, Virginia Woolf was born Adeline Virginia Stephen. She grew up in a unique home, as her father was Sir Leslie Stephen, a historian, author, and one of the leading figures in what was at that time extremely popular, alpinism. Her mother was born in India and posed as a model for a few painters. She was a nurse and even wrote a book on that subject. Both her parents had previously been married and widowed before becoming a couple. Wolf had three siblings and four half-siblings. The eight children lived at 22 Hyde Park Gate, Kensington. Two of her brothers had their education in Cambridge, but all the girls were homeschooled, where they had the luxury of a fully stocked Victorian library. Her father befriended William Thackeray, George Henry Lewis, and many more renowned thinkers. The aunt of her mother was Julia Margaret Cameron, the famous photographer. She spent the first 13 summers of her life in St. Ives, a town on the very southwestern tip of England. Their summer home there, called Talland House, is still there today. Views from the house show the Porthminster Bay and the Gadrivi Lighthouse, which inspired her writing, notably for her book called To the Lighthouse, published in 1927. Wolfe always recalled St. Ives with affection. Virginia was curious, playful, and full of joy. She started a newspaper about her family, where she noted down funny stories that involved family members. But her world grew darker when two of her half-brothers took advantage of her. When she was 13, she also lost her mother, who suffered rheumatic fever. Her half-sister, Stella, jumped into the void left by her late mother, only to die two years later as well. These events caused the first mental breakdown of Virginia Woolf. Apart from these personal setbacks, she studied German, Greek, and Latin at the Ladies' Department of King's College London. Her four years there got her exposed to the ideas of a few of the most prominent radical feminists of that time. In 1904 her father passed away after suffering from stomach cancer. This new setback caused Wolfe to be institutionalized for a while. This floating between literary excellence and feeling isolated and lonely would never stop during her lifetime. She started writing professionally in 1905 for the Times Literary Supplement. Only a year later, her 26-year-old brother Toby died from typhoid fever. Following her father's death, her brother and sister sold the family house in Hyde Park Gate and bought a new home situated in the Bloomsbury area of London. She met quite a few of the notable members of the Bloomsbury Group, which was an inner circle of intellectuals and artists. They became famous in 1910 for what was called the Dreadnought Hoax. Some of the members dressed up as a delegation of Ethiopian royals, as they persuaded the English Royal Navy to guide them around their warship, called the HMS Dreadnought. Virginia disguised herself as a bearded man during this elaborate joke. She met Leonard Wolfe there, and they soon became very close falling madly in love and eventually getting married on August 10, 1912. She started considering writing a novel, giving it the name of Melimbrosia. Nine years later, and many rewrites, she published it in 1915 under the title of The Voyage Out. She started toying with unusual narrative perspectives and dream states to tell her story in this work. Two years onwards, they bought a printing press and founded Hogarth Press, which provided them their very own publishing firm from their house. They published not only their own writing but also works of Sigmund Freud and T.S. Eliot. Her second novel was Night and Day, published in 1919, the same year the Wolfs bought Monk's House, a cottage situated in Rodmel. Her third book, Jacob's Room, came in 1922, and it was based on her brother Toby, but it was written in a different style, parting with some of the modernist techniques she used before. That year, she met Vita Sackville West, a writer and landscape gardener. 
They started a friendship that at some point grew to a romance which ended, but their friendship would endure till Virginia Woolf's death. In 1925 she published Mrs. Dalloway, which was received very well by the press at the time. The internal monologues of her characters shed light on themes such as feminism, mental illness, and homosexuality. She followed it up in 1927 with To the Lighthouse, another revolutionary book for its time, set on the Isle of Skye in Scotland. Sackville West would serve as the muse for Orlando, a biography, a novel Wolfe would publish in 1928, the quirky story of an English nobleman, who becomes a woman of 30, who lives through 300 years of English history. It was received well once more, making her writing ever more popular. A Room of One's Own was published in 1929, an essay based on lectures she gave in women's colleges. It examines the role of women in literature, and she starts the essay with the assumption that a woman must have money and a room of her own if she is to write fiction. She wrote what she would describe as a play poem next, a story compiled from six different voices in the waves, published in 1931. In 1937, the last novel published in her lifetime, called The Years, recounted a family's history over a generation. She habitually spoke in colleges and universities, writing essays and short stories. She was an intellectual, a feminist, and a bold and experimental writer, but she often had periods of depression and mood swings despite all these praises. Her husband was all too aware of her depression and witnessed her sinking deeper and deeper into sadness as she worked on her final manuscript, Between the Acts, published after her death in 1941. World War II had long started, and the couple agreed to commit suicide together if the Germans would invade England since Leonard was Jewish. Finally, her sadness got too great, and on March 28, 1941, she put on her overcoat, filled the pockets with stones, and walked into the River Ouse until the stream took her away. Her body was found three weeks later, she was cremated, and her remains were scattered at Monk's house. She remains one of the most influential writers of the 21st century. If you have suggestions on which books I should summarize, please let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.